A sleepless night, a hangover, a nearly missed game, fans coming to watch NFL players play basketball, a city that didn't even care. These were the perfect ingredients to create Wilt's 100 point game. Here's how it really happened. They say records are made to be broken. They probably never watched Wilt Chamberlain drop 100 points in a single game. Yeah, yeah. A few records are indeed broken, but most records aren't as insane as scoring 100 points in a game. While most casual NBA fans can easily identify the highest scoring game in league history, most do not know the full story behind the feat. It is quite the story. All the components to create a classic, mythologized moment that stands the test of time is present. You have the photo, the larger than life hero, and a performance that will only live on through word of mouth and a box score as the game was not even recorded. The fact there's no video only adds to the legend. Wilt's 100 point game is the Bigfoot of sports records. Hell, there's more video evidence of aliens than there is of Wilt scoring a single point in Hersey, Pennsylvania. So obviously, people must have flocked to see this game, right? No one could have known that Chamberlain was going to break the record, but he's still Will Chamberlain. One of the greatest centers of all time has got to draw a standing room only crowd. Nope. There was a total of 4,124 spectators in the building to see Wilt's accomplishment. That's basically a few mini caravans worth of humans. Even crazier was the fact that most of the people in the building didn't show up to see Chamberlain, or basketball players for that matter. They were there to watch professional football players play basketball. The Philadelphia Eagles tipped off against the Baltimore Colts on March 2, 1962. This, not Chamberlain, was what had drawn the crowd out on a dreary night in Pennsylvania. Just imagine that. People were more psyched to see NFL players play a sport they weren't even pros in than to watch one of the greatest basketball players ever. But the fans weren't the only ones not taking the game too seriously. Wilt himself wasn't too excited to face the last place Knicks. Yes, even back then, the Knicks stunk. The more things change, the more they say the same. The Big Dipper was more concerned with enjoying the nightlife in New York than he was with their basketball team. Given what we know about Wilt's actual best claim to fame, this isn't exactly a stunner. The story goes that Wilt spent all night on the town with a woman friend before getting back to his hotel at the crack of dawn. Because of his late night, Chamberlain showed up to take the train to Philly hungover and sleepless, as if he were a freshman in college just trying to make it to calculus class. There, he took a long lunch and nearly missed the team bus to the arena. The record-setting night was almost torpedoed before it started. But Wilt did make it to the arena, and the game between the Philadelphia Warriors and New York Knicks was set to begin. The Warriors, we know it's confusing, ran out to a large lead as expected. Wilt was absolutely manhandling the Knicks' backup center, as their starting center, Phil Jordan, was out because of the flu. Many suspected he was just hungover like Wilt. Booze back then was apparently all the rage, but Phil Jordan was no Chamberlain and Wilt was about to show him just what a hungover player could do. By half, Wilt had 41. His teammates were unimpressed. Chamberlain had already dropped 60 a few times this year and most just assumed it would be another 60 to 70 point night. Side note, imagine how great Wilt was that his own teammates figuratively yawned when he scored 41 points in a single half. They witnessed Wilt's greatness for so long, so consistently, him dropping more points in a half than most players can ever score in an entire NBA game was essentially like watching grass grow. But in the locker room, the team decided to spice up a downright boring night. They decided to just give Wilt the ball the rest of the night and see exactly how many points their star could get. Despite facing quadruple teams, you know, four dudes guarding one member of the human species at the same time, the Big Dipper had 69 points entering the fourth quarter. The Knicks were on their third string center because of foul trouble. 
Wilt had become an unstoppable force. And with his scoring record in sight, Chamberlain doubled down in his efforts to score every play. Soon, Wilt had 80. The crowd was screaming his name, all 4,000 of them. The Warriors had passed up every semblance of trying to score the ball themselves. The ball was going to Wilt and then in the basket. That was it. The Knicks began fouling in a desperate effort to prevent Chamberlain from scoring. They held the ball to prevent further embarrassment. Much like reboot attempts of uh, early 2000s comedies, the ploy was futile. Chamberlain continued scoring, and now the Warriors were following the Knicks to get the ball back in Chamberlain's hands as soon as possible. The idea of a regular basketball game had disappeared. It was basically Chamberlain trying to score against five desperate defenders. Finally, with just over a minute left, Wilt was at 98 points. All five Knicks were guarding him. All five. He missed twice at close range, but teammates rebounded it and passed up layups to give it back to Wilt. Eventually, he broke loose, caught a lob, and finished at the rim to bring his total to 100. Immediately, fans stormed the floor. They had to be waved off to finish the remaining 47 seconds of game time. The game ended with a final score of 169 to 147. That box score was Bockers. Wilt shot 63 times, more than half his team's attempts. The notoriously poor free throw shooter knocked down 28 of 32 from the charity strike. In the fourth quarter, he recorded 31 points. Surprisingly, the feat didn't really blow up in the media. Philly citizens basically just assumed Chamberlain would hit 100 points eventually. Nearly 60 years later, we can appreciate Chamberlain's record for what it is. A ridiculous accomplishment that will never be matched again. Granted, it occurred in a different era of the NBA, one that is unrecognizable from the game we see today. But still, you gotta respect the man who was so unstoppable that five grown men couldn't stop him from scoring. Just imagine what he could have done without the hangover.